Hi, it's Linda with CreativePLR.com, and today I'm looking at some worksheets or ideas that you can create for either homeschool learning or using in the lower grades of elementary school. And basically, these are either math type worksheets or they're going to be English language arts or recognizing letters. So let's look at some math worksheets. So keep in mind that in elementary school we're not doing calculus. So if you're thinking like, well, I'm not really good in math. I don't know if I can do that. I'm sure you can count. And so little children need practice counting, uh, counting items. So you make basic worksheets on counting and having them write the number. So for instance, in this worksheet, they're counting little cows, uh, watermelon, fish, uh, one dog, they would print a one there. And they need lots and lots of variations of these. They also need practice with just writing the number. So you need tracing practice. Now if you're using a font for this, um, Creative Fabrica has a great font that's called um, Tracingo, T-R-A-C-I-N-G-O. And they also have letter a letter tracing font. That's what it's called, letter tracing font. And it creates these lines, and it gives you that middle line. And you can actually type whatever letter or number that you want in there, and it'll get them ready. And that's what they use in the lower grades to practice writing, to get the number or letter the right size. So when you would be doing letters, you would be doing... Um, like a B would be tall, fill out the whole space. The bottom part of the B would be just on the bottom space. So they need lots of tracing practice. Um, identifying numbers, being able to find them, circle all the nines. So I did a whole series of these, one, two, three, four, five. I didn't do the zeros, I didn't do tens, uh, but you could do that. You could do them for upper grades where they're going uh, the very smallest grade, pre-kindergarten and kindergarten, first grade do 1 through 10 then 10 through 20 um, they you could do skip counting where you do a page where it's one two blank four five blank and they would fill in the numbers that are missing i've seen worksheets that go all the way up to 100 doing that um, so I've got, let's look at this one, different number sense, so variations of the numbers, so fingers raised, and all this is is just a, an icon or a picture, um, in, you know, there's, um, there's just five of them, one, two, three, four, five, and then you put them together like you'd be doing on your hands, um, circle a number, dice, if you can find dominoes with numbers on there, um, that would work as well. Anything that's numbers, so they recognize the numbers, and in this one, they're just drawing a line from this one to down here, to down to this finger, so they're doing that. Some more, here's a count and trace. You could do um, themes of these. I have, I did, was in the mood, I don't know why, I was in the mood to do fish. So I've got a lot of fish activities, and you would bundle these up in groups. For instance, um, I've got my fish counting and so there's fish here they would count the fish and then they would circle the number i've done several variations of these and what's really nice is you create a template and once you have your template then you just switch out the items uh, for instance i could have cats on there i could have dogs i could have farm animals um, i could have boys and girls i could have school tools I could have um, like cars or trucks. So you could have all different variations and kids need continual practice. And so a parent might be buying this for their child and then you do a different version and they would come back and they'd buy a different one. The kid gets to know, you know, the answer to this so they need a different worksheet to practice. And so here's one version where they just circle the number. Here's another version where you do the fish counting. You count all the fish that look like this. So here's one, two, three. Is there only three of those? That's possible. So I would type in a three here. You know, there's this fish. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You want to vary the number that you have on there. You don't want to have six fish, six of every fish. Um, the kid would get the pattern after a while. That's not necessarily a bad thing. So that's a different variation of counting. Um, here's a different one. 
similar to the first one. I have the numbers here, but then they would uh, color. Let's correct that. Color the number of the fish in each box. So they would count one, two, three, four, and then they would color in the four. They would count here. It's either nine or ten. They would count that, color that in. And so they would do that, and then they would count and then trace. You could have another page where there it's all about one. You have a big one. You have them tracing the one all over. You could have a sentence that says there's one fish and they would have to un underline the one. Um, and so there's lots of variations that you can create for math worksheets. Now, um, if you purchased the, um, or if you have someone, and you know someone, that purchased the, um, math worksheets that was out i guess some time ago months ago then you have access to these type worksheets these are for not at the um, kindergarten grade or the pre-k this would be like first or second even third grade um, and you would and i didn't put a title or anything on this but you would put a title on there maybe name and you put simple directions you know add um, add the numbers and find the write the answer in the box now, couple little remarks on here. Um, when you go into this program, it defaults to like 30 problems on the page. That's really overwhelming for a small child. Yes, I know the parent thinks they're getting a really bargain. There's 30 problems on each page, and if you give them 50 pages, um, they're getting a lot of math problems, but it's really overwhelming. Um, I put 15 on there, and, and even 15 seems like a lot, but it it's not as crowded a page as 30, 40, or 50 problems is. I would not put that many problems. I would be more likely to put fewer problems on a page and then do more pages. Um, believe it or not, uh, kids still learn about clock math, and so they learn about what this is first of all. This is 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 1 o'clock, and they do that, and then they do other clock math problems. For instance, you could take this clock and you'd say, uh, when it's 8 o'clock, um, you know, John gets up at 8 o'clock, and at 1 o'clock he goes out to skate. How many hours was it waiting until he skated? Okay, and then the kid would have to say, you know, from 8 o'clock to 1 o'clock, it's 5 hours. Okay, so there's all kinds of clock math, and you could do a whole bunch of worksheets on just using clock math uh, with little, little clocks. Um, fractions are for older grades, and trust me, they need lots of practice on this. However, I do want to suggest that if you're using... Um, if you're doing the smaller grades like this, um, probably an answer key is just not that vital because I'm going to assume, and it could be a big assumption, but I'm going to assume that parents can do 9 plus 9 and 2 plus 9 and 7 plus 9. They can do one digit addition, which is what you're going to have in the lower grades, um, or, or even simple two digit addition like 12 plus 2. Um, when you start talking about fractions, you're going to need to include a an answer key. Um, I know when my students are at the high school, they cannot do fractions. And, um, and I've been in parent conferences where the parents say, he takes after me, I can't do math either. So I'm not convinced the parents, parents can do fractions. And um, I'm not convinced the parents can do um, percentages. So when in doubt, just put in an answer key. This is the answer key that comes with that program that created these worksheets. However, I would be more inclined to take that, take these problems, go in and add, um, add a text box, and actually type the answer in there. And from, you know, you don't have to do them. You've got the, the answer key and, and actually put the answers in context. This is very difficult for a parent to read, especially when it starts typing page numbers. Um, they will print this out, split all the pages together uh, apart, and they won't have the page numbers there anymore. So that'll be very confusing. And one last thought. Um, all those coloring images that you've got, those simple coloring images, uh, whenever uh, Maureen Oliver has some great um, coloring images, and usually they are in packs of four. They usually call them upsells, and I forgot. They're the, the front offer. There's a bronze and a silver and a gold, I think. And um, usually I never buy over the, the first two offers. I don't want to say never. Once in a while I do. But 
the backgrounds are usually the second, you know, the, the second or the first upsell or the second offer. Uh, the first offer is usually, in this case, would be a dog. Now, these aren't Maureen's, but uh, she has some great ones, you know, and I just love them. I, I got the Easter bunnies from her, the Easter bunny line are uh, backgrounds. And so if you do a simple like that, you can put in numbers. And um, this is number recognition. And then it's also color recognition. And if the kids can't read the word um, brown or blue or green and keep to the basic colors, if you're going to do a coloring sheet, then what you could do is you do a little swatch, you add a text box in this case or you can add a shape and you can either type in the word or you could insert a shape and instead of writing in blue or orange you go up here to shape fill and you just say this and then you put in a text box next to it although i don't like the shape outline on that uh, you put in a text box next to it and then you would put in equals three okay and then obviously you make your font a little bit larger and you could do that for all the colors and i wouldn't get something uh, you know a design that's so detailed that you have 30 and 40 colors one good way of doing this is to print out the page and actually color it yourself and get an idea uh, if you just randomly start putting in colors um, you'll be off i know i've done that um, so you might want to do that for younger children so they see the color and they don't have to read the word orange. So I hope this was helpful and you get started on some printables for school kids. Um, the very young kids, it's easy to do. You're going to package them in bundles. Um, I sold my uh, my vocabulary stuff in sets of 10, but I'm going to do multiple sets and then I'll bundle them. They're selling in sets of 10, 20, uh, 50, one person selling 500 pages um, that to me is a little crazy but people will buy them so um, have fun uh, start exploring